Hello, my name is Dick Terry Lazidis, and I'm a painter, and I've been a painter, I think, since birth. I was born in Greece to a Brazilian mom and Greek father, and uh, we left when I was very young, I think three and a half, and came to New York City. And in New York City, um, I was exposed to uh, artists, established artists at a very young age because my mother saw that I was compulsive in doodling and painting and drawing <laughs> nonstop. So she figured I was a little budding artist. And uh, she started me in on a lot of after-school programs. And somewhere along the line, uh, met the first, I would probably say, professional uh, known artist. And at a very young age, I was exposed to um, masters. And this continued throughout my life, uh, being exposed to other artists, established artists, leading to an art high school, art college. I was very lucky at the time that I was in New York City that I was exposed to a lot of um, elements of the art world. Uh, this also included piano. I started piano at a very young age, I think four. And again, I was very lucky. Um, I had an intense, wonderful piano teacher, Ms. Vasily Zavatsky, and she only took students on for the concert circuit. So she would train youngsters and turn them into concert pianists at whatever age they were ready to come out. Um, I had this solid foundation in music, and again, <laughs> I exposed myself to other elements. Um, New York City offered uh, night bars, night clubs, places that had other pianists, and um, my exposure to other kinds of music besides classical, jazz, and rock, and blues, and everything else that was thrown into the mix. So I had a very um, colorful exposure to the arts in New York City, and uh, that stayed with me forever. And uh, my family, at the time, we used to go on these, you know, great weekend jaunts into um, the landscape of Greece, the mountains and whatnot. And at that time, it was spring, and uh, the mountains are covered with blooming poppies. And I remember it must have been such an incredible imprint to see such a fantastic landscape at a very young age that it was the first <laughs> oil painting that I did from memory as a child, which I have here to show you later. Um, and I think this imprint, this sense of indescribable beauty uh, in a landscape, um, probably steered me more in that direction than um, other elements that have happened to me throughout my life. Further in my life, I revisited that same theme of blooming poppies. It's over there on the top. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Sometimes you ask yourself, like, where did this info come from? How do you learn how to paint? You know, are you taught? Do you bungle your way through it? Um, I think it's a whole mixture, but on a much more intimate note, it, I think maybe for me, uh, it must come from some other memory. Because if you look at the little painting I did when I was three or what have you, there was no teacher. There was no one to show you what to do with colors. And yet at a very young age, I understood that with that medium, oil, in a traditional sense, you start from dark, you work your midtones, and you get to light. No one told me these things. There was no one to show you what to do with your palette. And yet, strangely enough, I seemed to know what to do at that age. And um, I think when it comes to learning how to paint, 
yes, you can expose yourself to other painters. Um, you learn a lot. Uh, you can have lessons, whatnot. But I think just about with everything else in life, it comes down to practice. Um, the artistry, in my opinion, might come later. You know, your, your first step is to learn how to master this medium you're using, whatever that medium is. Is it pen and ink, watercolor? Watercolor is different from oils, you know. You learn to handle the medium. So you go through this uh, period of, you know, trial and error. And then with time, the more you use it, you get good at it. Then you get very good at it, and then you have a different pitfall you got to watch out for. <laughs> And that is not to get too slick, because if you get too slick, then you start to lose the very essence of, in my opinion, what a painting is about. Um, you're not trying to do a, an illustration, you're doing a painting. And I'm the kind of painter that pushes paint. That's the painter I am, I push paint. And uh, I think people like me, uh, the end, the thing that drives them to the end to do this painting is an obsession with color. I come from the standpoint that everything you see in a painting, which is an illusion, uh, it's all about color. Uh, composition, form, all of this uh, is color. Uh, this was a process that I slowly learned on my own through experience until I actually heard it validated when I was going to these uh, debates in the art world in New York City and I was listening to these, you know, uh, high caliber artists uh, debating with each other. And uh, I realized, yeah, it wasn't just in my head <laughs> that uh, there seemed to be some uh, guiding central principle that makes you do what you do. And in my case, that's the obsession of color. Um, and this is my experience of art schools, and I, and I think I'm pretty qualified <laughs> to say this. Um, art schools are great if you're learning about art history, if you're learning about the media arts, um, how to promote yourself, um, the business end of it. If you want to learn a specific uh, craft, in this case, painting, the best thing to do, honestly, is to visit artists in their studios. Whether that studio is part of the school, whether those studios are somewhere out there in the world, um, if you're very, very young, uh, don't go alone, go with someone because you're going to meet a lot of artists and the art world is a very interesting place. Um, but yes, young or old, the best thing to do, in my opinion, is go directly to the artist studios and see what they're doing and talk to them. That will be the best way to learn, in my opinion, art. You can learn some things, tutorials over the internet. Same thing, you can look at tutorials at uh, piano plays over the internet but it does not replace an actual person being there and showing you all those ins and outs that you will not get in a 30 second video. Mm -hmm. I uh, edited a documentary, um, uh, History of Cartooning. Uh, I think it's called Out of the Inkwell. This was in my college years. I've dabbled in other areas as well. Um, there isn't too many places in terms of a creative outlet that I can think of that I haven't done. <laughs> Flower designing, uh, I worked for a high-end floral show. Uh, I've done massive gardening displays for um, a high-end, uh, well-known nursery on the East Coast. I've done uh, masks. Uh, for a huge festival called the Festival of the Gilles again in Europe in a town called Nivelle in Belgium which I love to this day beautiful memory there, beautiful people um, yes I've dabbled here and there 
and many things, but in the end, I've always come back to that core, which is landscape painting. I've never left it. Yeah, um, well, it comes down to colors. You know, um, if you look at my artwork, um, they are from different places that I've been. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting point in time, me being here in Colorado um, during COVID <laughs> for a landscape painter, you know, and I, I'm i strapped, I don't have a vehicle yet, you know. Um, so the colors are what stand stands out to me. Here you have your warm earth tones and your terracottas and uh, you could see that starting to pervade my artwork, whether it's an oil painting that I actually did from the TV, um, or if it's in person, a watercolor, you know. Um, usually, if you look at some of the older paintings, I guess you would call it my blue period, <laughs> but the colors here in Colorado are all warm and inviting. So I'm going to probably head in that direction and start bringing out a new palette. And it's just, uh, I'm just gonna continue pouring it out, whether it's acrylic or oils, you know, you have like aspen trees um, that I've looked at uh, this year in acrylic. Um, so I get to use a lot of flesh tones, you know. Um, yes. I just need to get myself out there. A lot of nature? Yes. It seems like you paint nature um, a lot. Yes. I can tell you, sure, I can teach you how to paint from a photograph or whatnot, but it's never going to replace you actually being there and studying what you're looking at in the colors. For example, very quickly, um, if you're painting from a photograph, most of the time you run into a problem, and that's the shadows. And if you look at the shadows in a photograph, it tends to be this kind of bland, dark, indescribable color. And as a matter of fact, before I had the capability to get myself out into what you might call plein air painting, you can tell the older works um, in the shadows, I use the color black. And later on in my palette, you see I don't have black. It's uh, hard to find black the way I see it in nature. Instead, everything's very light, including uh, the shadows. In nature, you will actually see colors in the shadows. Ah, that's purple. I did not know that, you know. You won't see that in a photograph unless you're doing something to, you know, change that photograph. Um, so, yes, I've been studying landscaping, you know, my eyes staring <laughs> at colors for so long that to a certain extent I can guess what that shadow and what those midtones are going to be. But again, nothing replaces actually being out there. Because again, here you have um, warm colors and terracottas and whatnot, and that changes the shadows as well. So yes, I'm looking forward to doing some new landscapes um, in oil. I've been dabbling in all these other mediums, but I like to try my hand. Just once in a while I go back to oil to take a sort of reading where I'm at. <laughs>